Today, I will take you on a journey of how what started as a simple side project has after over a year of development turned into a fully released game on the Google Play and App Store. But our story starts not one, two, or even three years ago, but all the way back in 2018. So here is my first ever sketch of a mobile maze game. I was originally planning on making a 3D first person game where you have to run through the maze as it fills up with water. You have to escape the maze before you drown and as a help you have a 2D map of all the passages you've already explored. In January 2022 I found this very paper while spending a weekend at my grandparents house. For all those years I had the game somewhere in the back of my mind but I never got around to making it. However, once I found those sketches, I had this brilliant idea. Why not just ditch the whole 3D running part and make a game about just the 2D map? So I made a quick prototype and a week later I had a fully functioning version of the game. The only problem was with how I made it. You see, for this version I used physics to make the player move and stop. The problem with this was that the physics system in Unity was very clunky and unreliable for precise movements like this. So realizing that this game was going nowhere, I put it on the shelf and forgot about it. That is, until April. For the whole time, I was thinking about a way of representing the game fully in code that would get rid of all the problems I described. I figured out a way to do that by representing the maze as a two-dimensional array where a zero meant that there is no wall there and a one meant that there is a wall there. The problem with that is that the level is not just a 2D grid, instead there are horizontal and vertical walls. To show this in code, I decided to dedicate each even row of the array to the horizontal walls and each odd row of the array to vertical walls. With this, I could represent every possible maze as a series of zeros and ones, so I created a new Unity project and started making it. Since I was no longer bound to Unity physics, I could design my game in any way I wanted, and I decided to move it to the third dimension. So then I added a player, made him move, and then made him stop at intersections. Every time the player enters a new square, the game counts the number of walls around him, and if there are less than two walls, it counts it as an intersection and stops the player. The reason for this is that there is no point of stopping the player when there are two walls around him as it's not like he can change the direction that he's moving. After that, I added support for multiple levels, then I started working on randomly generating the maze. After some research, I found many maze algorithms, all with different uses, but I decided to implement a modified version of recursive backtracking. It starts with all walls activated and picks a starting cell. Then, it randomly chooses a neighboring cell and destroys the wall between the two cells. The new cell is then marked as the current cell and the next random neighbor is picked. If the cell hasn't been visited yet, the wall is destroyed, but if it has, a new neighbor is picked. This process continues until we get to a cell where all the neighbors have already been visited. And this is where the backtracking part of the recursive backtracking comes in. As the algorithm remembers all the cells it has already visited, it starts going back until it gets to a cell with a neighbor that hasn't been visited. Following these simple rules, the algorithm keeps going until all cells have been visited and we have a randomly generated maze. And the best part of this algorithm is that it works no matter how big the maze is. I implemented the algorithm and since the game could now go infinitely, I also added a line chasing the player so that there is some tension and you can actually die in the game. Now that the maze was done, I added coins to collect and three different power-ups to help the player. Next up were some meteors to spice up the gameplay and then I made it all look pretty. I also had to give my game a name and I settled on Mazify. After that I spent two months making the game's UI, which I have to say was the most excruciating part of the whole process. Making every single asset and then importing it, scaling it, adding animations and then I added the skin system so I had to do it all over again for the skin menu and it was all so repetitive and so annoying that I started thinking of. Four months had passed and I hadn't even opened my Unity project. 
Whenever one of my friends asked about my game and when it was coming out, I would get a little bit of motivation to keep working, but it would all disappear when I remembered all the UI work ahead of me. This was also a time when I met my girlfriend, and as she lived halfway across Europe, texting and video calling was the only way to spend time together. Every minute that I would work on my game would be one less minute that I spent with her. My game was the last thing I could think about, so it just sat there for months. One day, I don't know what happened, but during a particularly boring class in school, I opened the Unity project again, and I was hooked. From that day until release, there hasn't been more than a few days without me making some progress on the game. I started seeing that the end was near and I might actually get to release my very own game. Within two weeks of that, I had finished the skin shop and even I had a setting screen so I was done with all UI work and I was filled with motivation. I added music and sound effects to my game with the help of my good friend Jan. A move cue so that you can make multiple moves at once and the game remembers what you do. This way if you quickly move twice it's not like the game will forget the second move but it will remember it and execute it as soon as it's possible. And the game was coming together quite well so I decided to build it for my phone for the first time. So here is the very first build of my game and it was quite frankly horrible. The game without vibrations felt so bland, the movement was horrible and there were so many bugs, like nothing worked. After a few weeks of work I fixed all the obvious problems with the game and then I started giving it to my friends. Everyone loved it and I was getting so much positive feedback, that is until I gave it to my best friend and that pushed the release date back at least 3 months. The worst thing is, he was right. The game was still shit. So many things just felt off that I wasn't able to see because I got so used to them and everyone else was too nice to tell me they sucked. The moral of the story is, before considering anything you make is done, give it to your best friend to try out. So I spent more than two months fixing the things that he pointed out to me and the game got so much better because of it. It was finally playable, so I could focus my next update on improving the game's performance. My biggest problem was with how I generated the levels. You are definitely familiar with the concept of FPS or frames per second. That is the amount of images your computer shows every single second. And every time an image is shown, the computer goes through all of the code in the game, performing all the calculations before moving on to the next frame. And before this update, I was generating the levels together with everything else in my game. Yes. Every single time I moved to a new level, the computer would perform all this in one frame, which obviously led to frame drops. So what I did is I used the fact that all processors now have multiple cores and I moved the maze generation to a different thread. In simpler terms, instead of the game waiting for the next level to generate, it simply creates a completely new process that runs on its own until the maze is generated. And then it sends it back to the main program when it's done. This means that the game can run smoothly even when a new level is being made. After fixing some bugs with the build, I managed to make a beta version of my game and I sent it to all my friends to try out. At this point even my best friend liked it so I knew the end was getting close. And this is the time when I started thinking about how to make money from my game. I decided to mostly use rewarded ads so that the player can watch an ad when they die to get an extra life. I also decided to make my ads mediated and what this means is that instead of directly getting an ad, I make a virtual auction and the company that offers the most money for my ad slot gets it. After spending a few days on fixing bugs and implementing all that, my base game was complete. So then I started thinking how do I make the player keep playing the game? I decided to do that in three ways. Achievements an online leaderboard, and a daily spin. I implemented all that and then made an Android build of my game and took a well-deserved break.
Once I was back from two amazing weeks, one with my girlfriend in Milan and one with my friends on Malta, I decided to finally settle on a release date. I landed on October 31st and the race with time was on. I first made an official trailer for the game that you can watch here and then I added some notifications to the game and a raid game button to boost its app store performance. With 10 days until release, I added in-app purchases, which would end up being both the best and the worst decision of my life. One week until release, I made it possible for you to share the game with your friends and also made a special skin that you get if you do it five times. With only three days left, I finished fixing all the bugs and I built the final version of the game and boom. I just click upload and it's on the App Store, right? No. So here is one thing they don't tell you about game development. There is so much legal work. I first had to create the privacy policy, which is that 50 page thing you see every time you download an app but never read. Yeah, I had to make that and then fill out the exact same information two more times for Google Play and App Store. Even though my game doesn't collect any data on the user, Unity and the app I use for ads do. So I had to painstakingly go through all of their documentation to find exactly what they collect. And once I was done with that, it was time to deal with taxes. As you can imagine, as an 18 year old, I am not very experienced with that and I am still convinced that I felt something wrong and I'm going to jail. And then with just 18 hours left until release, good job Luca, I published the game on the Google Play and App Store and sent it for review. A few hours later, disaster struck. Google Play Store rejected my app. This was because I naively set my game as targeted towards children, because it was. However, even though all of my game's content is completely kid-friendly, the ads I was showing weren't and I had to make my game 18 plus and submit it again. At least Apple approved my game. No, they rejected it too. <laughs> this was because I didn't add the restore purchases button. So after submitting a new version for the App Store 2, there was nothing I could do but wait as I was watching the hours pass and release getting closer and closer and I missed it. I lost all hope and was filled with dread and disappointment for two hours. But then just a few minutes after midnight, I got an email. My game was approved. At this point, I realized that I had done it. I made the game and I was going to publish it on the App Store alongside all other games that I played as a kid. I told my followers that I was going to release the game tomorrow and exactly one day after it was supposed to come out, I clicked the button and my game was out. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. It took a lot of work and it was honestly the most difficult video I've ever made. I was really excited to make this video though, almost as excited as I was to release my game and I'm even more excited to make part 2 which is going to cover the period after release. So if you want to see that, click subscribe. Also, please don't forget to download Mazify and try it out. It's available on the Google Play and App Store and it's going to be the first link in the description. Thank you once again and I'll see you next time. Bye.